play him deep into pull. And he does. Deep to left field. Way back. Will the wind hold it up? It is gone. A home run. Gary Sheffield blasting one into the teeth of that wind in left field. And the Florida Marlins take a 1 0 lead on the homer. I think there's a chance Charlie Nagy's still here in that backtrack in his sleep. <laughs> ah, ah, my God, what happened? The explosion that was Gary Sheffield making contact, won a World Series with the Marlins in 97. Uh, Chef joining LL Cool Chef. <laughs> Are you performing tonight? Man, how you doing, Gary? Hey, hey I'm good, man. I'm just, I'm just uh, not understanding what's going on. I kind of do, but I don't. Yeah, we. But, that's where we want to start. I mean, what are yeah. you watching? Give it to us from both sides. What you're seeing on the Dodgers side, and then if you're a Yankee fan and a, an expert as you are, what are you watching with the Yanks? I'm watching energy, and I think the energy is off here. Mm. Um, it seemed like before the game even started, you can sense panic. Um, just from everywhere. It's just like you don't have the feeling that we got a chance to win this game and the Dodgers are just walking around relaxed like they're, no, they're sitting on their home turf. And and um, I think the alien that showed up, Otani, you know, I think he, they sent him over. He's an alien, man. So, <laughs> you know, this, this this guy, you know, they just it gets hurt and they just put him, they, you know, they put a new chip in his shoulder and he goes out there and play. And, <laughs> He's a factor right away, you know, a four-pitch walk, and then everything just down here from there for, for the uh, Yankees. Yeah. Chef, when you look at this lineup with the Yankees, and I think one of the biggest things is they're hitting 185 runners in scoring position. Dude, you were one of the best hitters I've ever played with, ever seen. No one hit a ball harder than Gary Sheffield. It was it was absolutely incredible. <laughs> but you were great with runners in scoring position, especially when you go back to that 97 World Series <clears throat> when the pressure's on. What would you be telling these guys right now about hitting with runners in scoring position? Well, I think uh, uh, Stanton said it earlier. You know, he said when he walks up to the plate, the reason why the switch comes on is that he blocks everything out. It's total quiet. It's total total silence in your mind. And a lot of guys don't know how to compartmentalize the, the pressure of New York. They don't know how to take an at-bat and make it theirs. You know, they, it, it's always like something is going on, the electricity in the building and you feed off of that, but I'm I'm sensing none of that. I'm, I'm sensing you know the, the, a bunch of panic hitting, don't have a game plan. And Walker Bueller, you have to give him credit. Uh, yesterday, this guy, I told Jay J Roll, I say from pitch one to four, I knew this guy. I knew he was on. Mm. Sometimes you have to tip, tip your cap to the pitcher, but nowhere in the lineup that you sense any threat in the Yankees lineup. And and when you got men on base. It's you're you're in the driver's seat, and it all hitters feel like if you don't feel like you're in the driver's seat, you know you're you're a panic hitter because when a man is in scoring position, that's you know favor hitter, not pitcher. But it seems to be the opposite in this in this series. Yeah, it really it really does. Chef, I played with you in 2007. I know I know a little bit. You battled a shoulder injury that year and you look at a guy like Shohei Otani still going out there and being able to play I know you played through a little bit of a shoulder injury you know what is he going through and what was that like for you well I'll tell you this um, that guy is tough man I mean that injury is not easy to deal with uh, it's not easy to come back um, like I told you man this guy's an alien um, <laughs> the thing is is that when he sets his mind to do something, it, it, that, that's the ultimate team player. When you play hurt like this and you're going out there and giving your best, um, your teammates respect it, and I respect it as a fan, and this guy is, has been great for the game, and, and you have to give him this respect. Hey, Chef, getting back to what the Yankees are faced with tonight, I, I think ordinarily you'd say if you're the Yankees, knowing you're facing a bullpen game, you're licking your chops. But the way these bullpen games have gone and the way bullpen arms are now, if you're a Yankee hitter tonight, are you feeling better knowing you're going to go into a bullpen game for L.A.? Or would you rather face a traditional starter tonight to try to get back on track? Well, I'm not looking at that. When the, when the game starts, I'm looking at we have a game to play and we got nine innings. I don't care who's pitching. I don't care what rotation they have. At this point, we, got, we have to win one game. We have to win one inning at a time, one pitch at a time. 
it's none of that long term thinking for them right now. It's it's short term thinking because we have to get past today. And uh, that's the only thing that should be on their mind. When they start thinking about the bullpen, you don't want to start thinking about the Dodgers bullpen because what's coming out of them, them gates when they, they, they open them doors, it ain't nothing but electricity coming out of there. So I don't think you want to be in those kind of games. So, you know, favor Dodgers when it comes to the game like this when we're talking about bullpen. Mm. Well, Freddie Freeman hasn't really mattered to who's been on the mound either. He's like, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, never, he's laid them all up, Ooh. chef. You know, and yes. with, with, with Freddie, he was talking about um, one, of, one of the things we did earlier was a little breakdown. He said, I just want to be on top and I want to be on time. And when I think of Gary Sheffield, you were on top and you were yeah. on time a lot. Yeah. Can you talk about that approach that he's talking about? Well, I was watching him take bat practice, and and he's he's practicing what he's preaching. Um, you know, him and Mookie Betts, I, they put on a display in BP, and and it wasn't home runs over the fence. It was driving the ball through the six hole, and Mookie was hitting the ball in the right center gap, and that's all they focus on in bat practice. They wasn't trying to pull the baseball at all. When they probably when they the, the, the when they tried to pull one and hit it out, it went dead center, and the ball went nowhere because that wind was holding it up. And the, after that, they went right back to hitting balls the opposite field and putting on the display of, like, line drive after line drive. And I knew something good was going to happen because that's the right approach when the wind is blowing in. Chef, that is so good. Can you talk about that, man? You're one of the best in the business at that. Why is in, in batting practice going to, going to right field important for a hitter? Because what it does is just telling your, your mind, let the ball, get, let the ball travel see it long enough, and then just catch it. Just play catch. Just rotate to the ball. And and it's going to do its own work. If a guy is throwing 97 miles an hour, with that, that swing, whether the wind is blowing in or not, you're still going to be able to hit the ball through the wind. You see the ball I hit in the World Series. The, the, you know, it's a little cooler, but the ball is not going to go anywhere. And the only way you're going to make it go somewhere if you let that ball get deep and you rotate to the ball with force. And that's the only thing you're going to be successful doing. So good. Here's your World Series homer. Game three. Pow. I mean, the sound yeah. on this, Chef, like I, we yeah. said it when we brought you on. I think Charlie Nagy's still hearing that noise in his sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, the thing is, is that the wind was blowing in like, like crazy. I was like, there's no way to anybody hitting a home run today. And like you said, I wasn't even thinking pull in that situation. I always tell myself, make me pull the baseball. And, and if you pr throw the pitch that I have to pull, I would do that. But, you know, I just want to say something, you know, with um, with uh, Aaron Judd because, you know, I'm not feeling good of hearing what I'm hearing about this guy. This guy has been so good for baseball. And I know that everybody wants to talk about success and failures. and But this is a game we play, man. And I think that this guy deserves better. And, and, and the one thing that I go back to that I think he's dealing with right now, you go back to that Cleveland series – when they drilled him in his in his right up under his chest, and I think that that pitch has done damage to him mentally, that he's off a little bit. When, when you know it changed your eye angle, now you're looking more in, opposed to covering that outside part of that plate. And when you don't cover the outside part of the plate, you it pitchers always have a way of getting you in between, and I think that's what's happening with him. That's interesting, man. Chef, we love your perspective and your insights. Uh, that's what you get. 22 years in the big leagues, four of those years with the Dodgers, three yes. with the Yankees, and one glorious year as teammates with Sean <laughs> oh, Casey. Are you kidding me, that's man? My guy. That's my guy. <laughs> Chef, that's my guy. That's my guy. You're the I chef. I was looking for two hands, but he gave me one. <laughs> <laughs> chef, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate you. Enjoy game four tonight. Okay, guys. You're Thank the best, you Chef. Thanks, man. All right. Appreciate you guys. Gary Sheffield with us on World Series game day. We every year, oh, he's the best, every dude. year, Harold and I on hot stove are thumping him, dude, for the Hall of get Fame. Get him into Cooperstown. Stop it. Every get year, get him into Cooperstown, dude. I never played with a guy that hit the ball harder. I real quick, Gary Sheffield story. We're in Atlanta one time. Adam Dunn's obviously playing left field. Chef hits a ball, Maddie, to left field. It looked like Dunner was playing in for the bunt. It it hit the ground, ricocheted off Dunner's shoulder, but like rattled him, and the thing <laughs> kicked everywhere. And we, we came in to Dunner. They came in and go, dude, you all right? It's like, looked like you were playing in at third. Chef hit it so hard. Dunner didn't know what to do with the ball. In the outfield. He was in the outfield. He, he was in left field. I'm like, now that's that guy hits the ball harder than anybody.